guys. Welcome back to the shop here. Um, I think everybody knows, maybe, maybe not, that Dee's with Dee's Workshop and I are pretty good friends. And the other week or so, um, he and his wife came my way for a vacation, I guess, to see his wife. They wanted to see her sister, so they stayed there. It was only about a half hour away for me drive, so we seized the opportunity to get together and chat about different things. Um, since he's a new guy, I had a bunch of tools, a few tools, that things, items, whatever, that I wasn't really going to use anymore, so I gave them to him. And he also um, handed me some cool stuff. One of these, <laughs> this nice little, like, top dreidel thing, which is part of a game that I've never heard of, but it spins. It's, that is not easy to do, so I'm thrilled with that. He also gave me two uh, UHMD, ultra high density molecular weight plastic V blocks that he made. And I was going to shoot a video here for this today, this Friday, on uh, it, they're a little bit off, you know, and I wanted to make something perfect, perfect, perfection, like within a tenth of a thou or so. So I was going to shoot a video on working with that, and then I started looking at the material, thinking, oh, forget it, don't do it. But in any case, uh, I figured, let's show, you know, there was a lot of it was private, unlisted um, things, videos, between D's and me, uh, so nobody could see it. So I figured, what the heck, show everybody kind of what happens behind the scenes with this shop, and all the messing around I did with these V, to make one set V block set perfect. So for what it's worth, you really won't see machining, but I will be explaining what I did, the process, how I measured things, showing measuring and all kinds of different things. And wound up with two absolutely beautiful V blocks that are now down here in my V block drawer. <laughs> So I hope you enjoy seeing behind the scenes stuff and see you next time. Oh, I'm trying to salvage this thing, thinking about it. How do you salvage this since everything is off by a bit? Um, I don't really need the big groove. So I figure I'm gonna make this, just cut that away and make it just the small groove. So, I want everything to be with respect to the V-groove. So, I took a gauge pin, put it in the vise first, turned this over, clamped it, hammered it, everything, so that I'm sure it's sitting in the V-groove. The size of this, I'm hitting the middle of the V-groove. Okay, then fly cut this side. Come over here with the height gauge, and check for the peak. How how good a job did I do? Well first I put the height gauge on this and it was rocking. Okay. Run it once over 600 grit on the uh, granite surface here. It's rock solid now. I can put the needle here, here, here and here. Push on it all I want. Doesn't move. Needle stays put. This is my tenth inch indicator. A tenth of a thou. <laughs> so, all right, so I put it on the plate. I'm nice and solid, and I came over and stuck. I don't know if you guys can see the needle, but where's the high spot? There it is, right on zero. And I came over to this end, and I was like four tenths off. So, lap it on the 600 grit, gently on one side to lower it a bit. Now I've got it so that if I come over on this side, there it is. I'm within one tenth. I'm off the edge. <laughs> within a tenth, right? Let's see here. Must be a burr on the edge. Yeah, I'm within two tenths. So when I cut this in half, it'll be even better. There must be a burr here that I can't feel. I probably should try to figure out how to swipe this once on 600 grit. Can I do it on a granite? I can do that. I don't know if that's doing anything, but let's see. 
But all right, put it back on this side. I think this was the zero side. Oh, it's higher now. A lot higher. Does it move? A little bit. And this side, this is the zero side. Boy, did that really affect it. Something's wrong with the groove, so I gotta work on that to get that perfect. This should be zero now, right? No, it's under. Under by quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I take it up. <laughs> there. Is that zero? That's about a tenth under. Zero. And this side, a lot higher now. That did something to that groove. So the groove isn't really perfectly straight, so I'm gonna to have to figure out how I can straighten that out. So I'll bring it back when I figure it out. Well, that was pretty easy. All I did was put the sandpaper right up to the edge and then ran that and then flipped it over and ran it and I can see where it actually hit. And putting the gauge pin in there, it feels completely different. It's nice and smooth now. So I could see all the high spots there were. It took them all down. Now, I put the height gauge back on it. Zero, one-tenth over. Moved it all the way over here. Zero, one-tenth over. Move it all the way down here, same thing. So it got rid of whatever burr too that was on these edge pieces. So, okay, now I've got a surface here that is parallel to the top of a gauge pin to this groove. So now I'm gonna just put it in the mill, fly cut this, so now I know I have two parallel sides to this thing. Next, the question is how to do these sides because I know they're pretty bad. I'm thinking that I can put this in the vise one uh, parallel onto this. It should stay, you know, I should be able to lock it perfectly. Do one cut, leave the mill at the exact same height, flip it over, do the cut. Now I know um, I'm not doing this number. I know I'm not doing this number right now. I don't care about this angle because when I fly cut this top to the bottom, I know this V groove will be perfect to the two surfaces. You know, it'll be 45 to this surface. Yeah. So, okay, let me try to set this up in the mill. And now, since I have that surface, dust this surface, then take it over and take all this stuff down. And then I can bring it back over here and double check how it came out. Well, having pretty good luck with this so far. Bring this down a little more. Um, to kind of review what I did, I used a small gauge pin um, and put it in here. Knowing that the sides are crooked, I did, you know, clamp this whole thing in the vise and gives me that surface and it when I indicate it across it looks good come over to this side put the gauge pin in there looks perfect just now I wanted to try see how good the groove was so I put a much larger gauge pin in here and it's like on the money too I guess I can show you guys so this should come in about one thou yeah that's right there is a little bit over a thou. Okay, because this has got problems here. Yeah, all right, so that's uh, two tenths over. And this side, tenth under. So I'm about three tenths. I don't know why earlier, a minute ago, I had like perfect, it was on the money. That's about a tenth over, so. I think that's good enough, you know, on this thing. Try this little one again. I'm gonna come down a bunch here to get that. Way, way too far. All right, so there's hey, still up high, huh? Yeah, bring it down to about a thou. All right, so if I'm looking at that, 
that's two tenths over this side two tenths over so it's pretty good um, as far as that so then I put it like this on a parallel here and did that face and it came out perfect too as far as I can tell then I did this I didn't move I locked the Z head so I know I want this distance to be the same here put it back in on the V uh, parallel and did this side without moving Z and it came out perfect so um, I've only then I put a square up against the face here which side did I do I did this side fly cut no I fly cut this side I can see the marks in it so that gave me this and I used my square on all these edges and it's perfect boy they're like right on it so all I have to do left is fly cut this and then cut it in half and I'll oh yeah I gotta put this in the vise and just get rid of all this material down to here so this guy has been salvaged this is I'm pretty thrilled with this doing some of these measurements though there's burrs all over when I fly cut I want to be sure there's no burr in here so I'm fly cutting this way to get rid of any burrs burrs are over here in the same way on this side when I do it so I can see there's particles and junk I keep wiping it lightly hitting it on 600 grit to get rid of the burrs on it did accidentally go too far here but I kept going down and down and got rid of most of it it was way over here because I didn't have this edge in the vise I had um, a parallel here and it tilted so it wound up cutting that too deep so I wound up getting a real short parallel on this thing so I could get it down so that this and this was in the vise jaws and it straightened it out nicely so um pretty good uh kind of wish that wasn't there but you uh, know i don't know whether i want to set it up again just to, i probably will just to get rid of that because you know i'm just too picky about things but i'm thrilled that i've got everything within a couple of tenths of this groove a couple of nice items here junk mail that goes in the trash eBay fine from China ridiculous price I'm almost out of aluminum insert so these are ones that I bought before wrong side of the bridge I don't know. so there they are right oh nicely wrapped too huh that's them oh, I cut the whole bag open beautiful huh for aluminum specifically oh the picture showed a label on it this doesn't have the label but I don't care another book metals handbook or whatever this one's supposed to be in mint condition let's see I hope the guy didn't make that up what's with this I need another blade here this sucks I'm trying to cut things open oh I did put it in the cardboard here to protect it nice good I don't have to worry about cutting the book up. <laughs> All right. Oh, come on. I hate packaging. I can't tell you. <sighs> Give me the book, huh? There. Junk all over the place. Ew, what happened to my jeans? I got spilled something on them. All right, how do you open it now? I right, let it taste. Oh, nice. Ooh, boy, that does look nice. Yeah, this does look pristine. He said there wasn't a signature in it. Looks like I have to clean it up a little bit, but... Whoa, only seven volumes. I think they're up to 18 or something now, but... Oh, yeah, this was uh, forging and casting, so... Business thing from a bookstore, too. Wow, it's cracking, creaking. What's the date on this thing? It's 1970. Contributors and forging, right? Hammers and press for forging. Selection of hammers and presses for closed die forging. Dies. 
and dye materials. Wow, all kinds of stuff. Not that I'm interested, but I couldn't resist the price. I put it in my uh, watch list on eBay and was given a ridiculous offer. So, forging non ferrous metals. Wow, man. Molding and casting. That is the one thing I was interested in. Sand molding. There you go. All right. So I will be learning something from this book. What? Plaster mold casting? Oh, that's going to be interesting. I never thought of using plaster. Man, it goes on and on. Huh. Permanent mold casting? Well, melting of gray iron. Production of ductile iron. Goes on quite a bit. So, yeah, the book is in really good condition. Wow, look at all this stuff gadgets and oh okay so this is another book I'll be looking forward to going through and seeing what's in it but it is in great condition just needs a little cleanup trying to get the camera in real close here so you can actually read the numbers I need to go up higher I need more field of view there we go so I can bring this this way I think you can read the numbers, I don't know. This should be the zero side here. This is the 10th inch indicator. So I'm recording zero, right? Right on the zero. This side, if I come in, there's one tenth, there's two tenths. It's hitting two tenths, so right on precision. So I just wanted to show you that. Hey, just wanted to bring you up to speed on these things. Wow, a lot of work, but um, I wound up, since they're exactly the same, I put this like this in the vise, and I ran a 45 degree V um, chamfer tool through there. Came down one thousandth, and it was just cutting both sides. So somehow, you really got this V groove perfect. Um, the problem was it held the gauge pin correct this way, but it was angled. So that's why I had to do that with the chamfer tool. Now this is an absolutely perfect pair, match pair, within a half a tenth of a thou. I put this back on the granite plate. I checked all of the surfaces here. They're perfect. They're identical. I checked the heights. They're identical. I put a gauge pin in here. Checked it. It's holding it perfect. Exact same height on this one, holding it perfect. I put it, held the gauge pin in there. Check this side, this side, perfectly straight. This one, exact same reading. So this definitely goes into my uh, drawer now. I think this is the best set that I've ever made or played with so thanks a million for this I really appreciate it I don't even want to lap these things because I know I'll throw it off a half a tenth but so cool just wanted to follow up with that